Well, good morning. Um, this morning we are going to be um, pressing apples. The press will be is op will be operational, and today we're going to get into it. But before we get to that, I wanted to do a quick video on how I'm going to be finishing the tub that the juice will be falling into. Last video was on the floor. This one is just about how the how we're we making the tub. Now I did shoot a whole stack of footage on how I made the various components but it was mostly sore and chisel work and planing and stuff and you guys have seen that before. So this video is just going to be on how to use the bits and pieces that I made and if anyone wants to know how to make them well it's pretty simple stuff. Um, just ask in the comments if, if it's not clear. Well, so the first thing is that we've got this sliding taper which formed, which seals the floor. We knock that board in, which is tapered, and that closes up all the gaps in the floor. But then to secure the floor, that that will tighten the floor up very, very tightly between the posts. But then just to secure it a little bit more, um, you can see that gap there. Into that gap goes a wedge. And that just knocks it home there. We have another one here. It holds that. Um, so we've got the, the, wall, the walls of the tub. And we've got a sliding dovetail, which is pretty tight to stop the juice from getting out through that joint. But now we've got to hold this down onto the floor. Now if this was, um, if I was using modern techniques, I'd just put a hole through there and bolt it down. It would be really, really simple. Um, but because I'm aiming that this is um, uh, a reproduction of a press from a much earlier period, so sort of pre-1600s, they had bolts and screws and threads and stuff, so it, you know I could get away with it. But, you wouldn't tend to find them in an agricultural implement like this. Um, you'd find them in very expensive stuff, like clocks and machines and so on. So, what I've got is a um, very simple system, which is just a piece of wood with a, a notch cut out of it. Um, the bottom of the notch is on a slight angle, and that matches up with a wedge. Now normally, when we're using the press, these would be like so and the wedge would be on the bottom. But so it's easy to see what's going on. Um, for the video, I'm going to install it like so. And that just fits on the bottom of the board, on, the, on, the, on, on this board. And then on the side of the tub, we fit that in like that. And we should see this gap close up. Tight. Excellent. So I've got another one of those to go here. There. Now, so different solution. Um, well, actually, no, the same solution, but just a different approach. These ones are longer, and the reason for that is for the center three boards, or sorry, for, the, for the very center floorboard, which is this one, the, um, the, the tapered floorboard, I can't put one of these clamps well here because the taper's gotta come out. So what I'm doing is with these longer clamps, I'm putting them either side of the, the sliding tapered board, and then underneath, I'm putting another piece of four x four, and then the three floorboards the top of the, the side of the, the, the back of the tub and that 4 before underneath they were all clamped together to hold to hold it in place and secure um, tighten up that joint across those three boards um, and I'd show you that now except the 4 before heat that I have for this position um, the piece of wood that I had for this job it's currently um, covered in honey because we used it to press the honey um, which you'll see in another video. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> that's going to be ready for use later today because we're going to be washing the honey off the block of wood to make um, a batch of mead. Um, so anyway, so that's the back of the tub done. Now we need to do the sides. So what we're doing now is it's basically the same process using wedges. Um, now this post is a good deal wider than 
this one and so I've cut this slot in it for the side of the tub to go through but I've cut it over oversize so we can knock a wedge in um, be another wedge that goes in there um, another wedge here and that's tightened that joint up all the way along there uh, and then on this side it's basically the same thing um, except because instead of having a, a notch from the post um, I've just drilled a hole and put these pegs in and we just put a wedge in oh, put the wedge in there and that's tightened it up there uh, duh, duh. I've got to cut a better wedge for um, this position And that sealed that joint up there. So I think um, before we get pressing, I'm going to make another clamp that'll sit there and hold that in, so we're not having juice running out at this side. But that's basically how it, it's going to be done. It's just a series of um, blocks and wedges to hold it all together. And if even if there are some small gaps, like at the moment there's gaps in the floor because I don't have the tape of board knocked in, but even, even if there are small gaps once it's all ready to go, if we get it tight, as soon as the wood starts to get a little bit wet, it'll start to swell, those gaps should all seal. Um, yeah. Um, the only other thing that I've got to do now is finish making the pressing boards. The pressing boards will be where I sit in the tub and have the, the pulp from the apples you know, stacked on top of them and you'll see that in the next video. So um, it's going to be a very busy day today, really exciting. Um, I wouldn't say it's the end of a long process but it's certainly a major milestone because um, we're actually going to get, hopefully, if all goes well, by the end of today we'll have some apple juice. So see you in the next video, talk soon.